Hi, Rick Gideon here for Columbiana Ecclesia of God. I never pre-plan these or <clears throat> I never write these videos out. I never script them. So uh, this one's a difficult video, as you can see on my title. <clears throat> Millions of Americans, millions in the United States, millions in the nation or tribe of Ephraim, as a witness to you, are uh, going to die. Very few are going to be left. This is from the Word of God because of, you know, we received everything. We received the bulk of the blessings of Abraham. Realized in the world reserve currency and realized in the petrodollar, we had a free meal ticket. To me, it actually came out to be a curse. Uh, our wickedness from last year, making gay marriage the law of the land. Uh, uh, continual adulteries, drunkenness, drug abuse, uh, cheating, lying, uh, corruption from the top down. God says the whole body is sick from the top of the head to the sole of the foot. Look, I did most of this stuff myself. Adultery, drugs, alcohol, uh, lying, stealing. I did it all. I have nothing over anybody. When I look at the people I work with, I see innocent people, people that have been blinded. Their leaders have caused them to be destroyed, both spiritual and religious. Uh, another thing, our pagan religion. We never forsook Baal when our forefathers were carried out by the Assyrians by 722 B.C. So it is uh, with a lot of emotion I do this video. This nation is going to be destroyed uh, let's put it this way, within 10 or 11 years, God is going to uh, uh, do a short work on the earth, cut it short in righteousness. So if you think I have, um, if you think I'm, you know, got my, you think I get off doing these, this, this type of stuff, it's a dirty job. I feel real lonely right now. I'm all by myself. My family can't handle the revelations, and let's just stop right there. Just want to, uh, uh, Amos chapter 6, verse 3. Woe to you who put off the day of doom, who caused the seat of violence to come near, who lie on beds of ivory. This is talking about the people that just don't have a care of the destruction of the nation. This is talking about Ephraim. This is talking about Joseph. Stretch out on your couches. Eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall who sing idly to the sound of string instruments and invent for yourself musical instruments like David. Strum on your harps, your guitars like David. Let's just put it into the modern age. The Bible is a living document for our day. Who drink wine by the bowlful. We're wine drinkers here in the United States, in Ephraim. And anoint yourselves with the best ointments or lotions, but are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Have spent a lot of time in tears this past summer over many things. This is one of them that's to come. I see it down the road through the Moadim or appointed times that God has ordained through the moons in the future. What can I do? Like, uh, like Amos. I wasn't a, uh, what did Amos say? I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. But 
prayer, I mean, just, just paraphrasing, God took me from among the flock, tending the flock, and he made me a prophet over Israel. I was a flunky in school. Couldn't pay attention. Brain always racing. I was bored, except with history and girls. Could drink anybody under the table at one time, as I was saying. Anyways, here I am, a prisoner of Yahweh God. This is what's coming. This is prophecies, just a couple for our nation, and I'll get to millions. How many? Only one-tenth of this nation is going to remain left into captivity, and that one-tenth will wish they were with the other nine-tenths who died. They will be terrorized. They will be barely alive, and they will come to understand who they are in captivity and will cry out for Messiah's return. Starting in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 4. Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. So you have Israel and Judah. You have the Jewish people, Judah, and you have Israel, primarily Ephraim, the United States, as a witness. We don't know who we are, Isaiah 1, verses 2 and 3. For thus says the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor, and all faces turn pale? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, he put his name along with, let me back up, along with Israel, along with the names of Abraham and Isaac on Ephraim and Manasseh, but Ephraim primarily, the youngest of the two sons of jo Joseph. It will be the time of Jacob's trouble, but he will be saved out of it. Not many left. As we'll see. Again, this is not uh, this is not something that I'm staring at martyrdom. How would you like to imagine in your mind being roasted in fire? And I'm as wimpy as they come. Okay, verse 15 of Jeremiah 31. This was actually used in Matthew, the slaughter of the innocents, but as I'll point out to you, this was not, this prophecy was not really for Judah. It was a type of small runner and you could fit it in there. I want to point out something. I did a video a couple of years on this. Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, Lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. Okay, Rachel was not the mother of Judah. Leah was the mother of Judah, who was the father of the Jewish people, Yahudi. The Jews over there in that little country, Israel. Rachel was the mother of who? Joseph. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. I'm just a bond servant of the one who called me. I was a nobody. I'm still a nobody. All right. I forgot to uh, put this one in. Hosea 5 and verse 9. Who's going to bear the brunt of the tribes of Israel? 
all the tribes are here in the United States as a witness. France, Reuben, uh, Dan, Ireland, Denmark, um, Zebulun, uh, Holland, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, Issachar, Finland, so on and so forth. So, Hosea 5 and verse 9, listen. Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. I am among the tribes of Israel. I make it known what is sure. That's us. We're the lead tribe. We had all the blessings. We didn't give God glory. I had already told God. I've mentioned it several times this summer. I said, I, I'm not, uh, I, I, if it was me, I would find a different way to come about this. But you know what? In the end, he says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. The only thing that gives me comfort is everyone is going to be saved. Not like crappy, uh, uh, um, uh, blasph blasphemous, stupid Orthodox Christianity that witnesses that most people are going to roast in fire forever. And just God has a purpose. He has a way of doing things. In the end, I can't question it. Neither can you. Okay. Last scripture. Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah's calling. I actually took this, uh, when, when I realized we were in the spirit of the law, I actually said the same thing when, when I was moved by the spirit. And I kind of heard a voice that said, who shall I send? And I said, send me. Not that I'm anybody. This is talking about the house of Israel and Ephraim in particular. Pick it up in verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. He's going to shut them down. He's going to shut their eyes. He's going to, he's going to close their eyes and shut their ears. And he has. He's blinded them. Oh, it's starting to gain traction. People are starting to understand who the tribes of Israel are. Many of them are in the Ecclesia of Laodicea as a witness. Keeping the law and keeping the reality of the law, the letter of the law and the spirit of the law, they're in between. That's Laodicea. Then I said, Lord, how long? Now, this is there's nuclear war coming. A third, uh, Ezekiel 5, a third is going to die in fire. A third uh, will be killed by the sword. There will be an invasion. He's going to execute the vengeance of the covenant and bring a sword into the, into the land here. Led by Assyria. And he's going to have a lot of help. Germany. He's going to have a lot of help. Edom. Chaldea. And then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities are laid waste. And without inhabitant, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate, the Lord has removed, removed men far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, but yet a tenth will be in it and will return to be for consuming as a terebinth tree or as an oak whose stump remains when it is cut down, so the holy seed shall be its stump. Uh, that's... Uh, what do we have, a population of 314 million? What is that, 290 million people uh, eventually dead? All I can do is relay the message. It's coming. You're going to have an economic collapse. You can see it's coming. 
if you're following the news and following what's going on. It's going to be overrun by foreigners. And eventually, you know, well, God is going to raise, what's he, he's going to flip. The age of Joseph is coming to an end. He's going to flip everything upside down. The rise of the Gentiles is coming. And it's going to be quick. If there's a nation that can rebound quickly and build himself up as a military force to be reckoned with, it's the nation of Germany, Assyria, as a witness to you. He didn't send over a million refugees over there, Islamic refugees for nothing, and a world economic collapse. And Hitler's uh, book, Mein Kampf, released after 70 years into the 71st year. So, 290 million in America, the United States, Ephraim, the Great Assembly of Peoples, could eventually die, and only a tenth remaining. You know what? It's very disturbing to me. It's very troubling. But this is my job, a very lonely job. I'm really alone right now. I got a feeling this is going to be a very lonely week for me. So thank you for your time and thank you for listening.